Hi there, let's move on to the next review of this day, and that is anatomy of human digestive system, a very easy topic to discuss. So remember when it comes to digestion, it's a process, a process in which food is broken down into smaller molecules that a body can use to nourish the cells and to provide energy. As you eat the food, it cannot be used up by the body right away, so it has to change or to change into smaller molecules for them to convert it into energy, the food that you eat. The digestive system of humans, as well as other vertebrates, is described as tube-like. And we can say it's a tube-like because there is an opening where the food can enter and waste products can exit. The two main parts of the uh, digestive or the organs for digestion are the elementary canal and then the second one is the accessory organ. Let's take a look. Beginning with the elementary canal from the name itself, canal. It's like a canal from the mouth. In the mouth, this is the first digestion happen. So when you eat something sweet, you will notice that it dissolves easily by the saliva. So you may say that the carbohydrates, sugar, are already been dissolved first in your mouth. It is also known as the oral cavity. And the teeth are, well, as part of your mouth, it helps to chew the food or to digest the food physically. And as well as the salivary glands in the tongue, they produce a saliva in order to chemically digest the food that you are chewing when it is in your mouth. The tongue pushes the food towards your teeth for you to be able to chew it and to facilitate swallowing. The salivary glands here, we have one, two, three, the sublingual, the parotid, are the glands that produce saliva to masticate the food uh, for you to easily swallow the food also. We also have the heart and the soul palate found in your mouth. Look at this. So this, are, this is the palate, the floor of the mouth, alve alveolar bridge. We also have the retromolar trigons. These are the different parts you can see inside your mouth. So again, the yellow thing here is the Buddha Choo Choo and look how or the process of swallowing it. The next part connected to the mouth after the mouth is called the pharynx. The pharynx is also known as throat. And it can be found at the back of your mouth. Here, here's the throat, here's the pharynx. And the green thing here is the food that you swallow. So digestion and respiration may happen at the same time here in the pharynx, in your throat. This is trachea and the esophagus. And this little flap of tissue here that covers the trachea when you swallow food is called the epiglottis. Well, for to prevent you from or to let this food enter your trachea. So again, we call this flap of tissue as the epiglottis. Next part connected to your pharynx is called the esophagus. It is the long tube that again connects the pharynx down to your stomach and then remember that the food that you swallow here turns out to be a bolus it should be in a bolus uh, shape and for you to be able to place it or move the food down to your stomach there is a movement known as peristalsis it pushes the food down to your stomach so even when you eat upside down, still the food will be pushed down towards to your stomach. Next organ in the elementary canal is the stomach. It's a large J shape or a pear shaped organ. Muscular because it contains smooth muscle and then it is elastic. It can expand so many food you eat. And then Trachea and the gastric, gastric glands are the one produces 
the gas structures in order to digest chemically the food or the bolus that you eat. So we have different kinds of gastric glands such as the mucus secreting cells, the alkaline mucus, then we have the parietal cell that produces hydrochloric acid, the zymogenic cells that produce protein digestive enzyme, and the G cells for the hormone gesture. So those are the different uh, organs that or glands that produces enzymes. Contraction of churning mixes or, con or churning mixes the food with the gastric juice until it is changed into chyme. So from bolus down into chyme. Occasional backflowing of the acidic chyme is the esophagus in the esophagus can cause heartburn. Remember that the ball has already been mixed with gastric juice, and when this ball is returned to the esophagus, it will really burn out the lining of the esophagus, giving you giving you a feeling that your heart is burning because of the acid. Then connected to your stomach is the small intestine. This is the small intestine. It's very long, as you can see here. This is where complete digestion and absorption happens. This is divided into three parts. Again, complete digestion and absorption happen. We have the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum as the part. Secreting enzymes, changing the food into simplest form to be absorbed by your body going to your cell and then it is considered to be the longest organ of our digestive system so an adult has six meters long approximately and to and um, in diameter it's 2.5 meters and then divided into three sections duodenum jejunum and the ileum Connected to the small intestine is called the large intestine. Here is the large intestine. Still keep on moving because they keep on pushing the food. So it is also known as the colon based on its physical structure. It is 1.5 meters long and 5 centimeters in diameter. And what happens here is that water and salt has been absorbed. And you will notice that your pickle material is only already solid because water and salt is being absorbed in the large intestine. So what will be the main function? First, it's the temporary storage of pickle material. Second, it absorbs vitamins produced by certain symbiotic bacteria in the colon, the good bacteria. And third, it reabsorbs water from undigested residues. A composed of three parts. First is the ascending colon. Here is the ascending colon. Next is called the transverse colon. Here. And the third oops, is the descending colon. Down to the next part which is the rectum okay rectum is located at the distal end of the sigmoid column it's eight inches long and we can say that this is the warehouse for the undigested residues or faces and last but not the it's it's the last of course anus is the end of the rectum eight inches long and there's another part here the opening it's the anus or we can also call it the anal canal it is the exit point for fecal material so we're done with the element of the canal beginning with the mouth down to your pharynx or the throat your esophagus down to the stomach, to your small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and the anus. 
second part of the digestive organs are the group of accessory organs of digestion. They are called accessory organs and they are also part of the exocrine gland. They have ducts in openings that secrete chemical substances into the organs of digestion, which somehow facilitate the digestive process. Not directly part of the digestive organ, they are used to be accessory because they tend to help also, but not the main parts or part of the digestion process or digestive system, I mean. We have the salivary glands that are located in your mouth. We have three, the sublingual, submandibular, and the parotid gland. In here, they secrete saliva, a chemical substance that uh, is a combination of water, water fluid, are called the sewers and mucus. So in one day, we could have approximately one liter of this saliva. The mucus part of the saliva is the one that lubricates the mouth and it aids in swallowing. While the sewers part contains a salivary amylase thiolene that digests carbohydrates. The liver is another accessory organ here. As you can see, it's considered to be the largest organ in the body. At the side of the upper, or you can find it at the side of the upper abdomen, producing bile from bilirubin, a waste product for when red blood cells are being destroyed. So they recycle it and turn it into a bile. The function of the bile produced by the liver uh, is to emulsify the fat and neutralizes the acidity of the stomach. Connected to it is a small pouch, this cream, which is called the gallbladder. Considered to be the temporary storage of the bile. So there are 500 to 1000 ml of bile can be stored here in the gallbladder. Another accessory organ is this one. We call it the pancreas. It is a large elongated gland located at the back of the stomach. It is yellow in color and it is 18 centimeter long and 4 centimeters wide. It functions as both for exocrine and, and for endocrine. Endocrine part consists of the large spherical clusters known as the islets of Langerhans. This one, islets of Langerhans. They are hormones or they secrete hormones that are important in metabolism of sugar. There you go. And then as part of the exocrine gland, consists of small berry-like clusters known as the pancreatic Asini, this portion, which secretes digestive enzymes and then put it directly to your duodenum as the first part of your small intestine. This is the microscopic view. The Asinar cells secrete four enzymes. They are the amylop amylopsin, trypsin, or trypsin, stepsin, and nuclease. So there you go. Those are, of course, the parts of the digestive system or the organs of digestive system as well as their function, as well as their growth. Alimentary canal and the accessory organs. I hope you learned something. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Bye.